know, I have the, uh, the, the distinct uh, pleasure and honor to meet so many newcomers that arrive here in Toronto. Every single day I get to meet newcomers who arrive here uh, into, uh, into Toronto and Ontario. And um, it's really a humbling experience. Um, you get to meet uh, many people who uh, have such high levels of education, who have such world experience, and, uh, and uh, they're here. And uh, uh, in, so, in so many cases, for the first time in their life, they feel at home. And uh, for me, uh, being able to go out and, uh, and talk to people and, uh, and hear their experiences, it's, uh, it's such an honor. And if you think about it, um, you know, we have, uh, People from all around the world are coming into Ontario. Uh, over 200 different countries are represented in our province, and there's over 250 languages that are spoken. You know, this is a, a very diverse place. And I told the House yesterday, uh, when I introduced uh, the Ontario uh, post-immigration uh, legislation, the Ontario Immigration Act, I, um, I said that people come here uh, to Ontario uh, because of our, our, our values that we hold as, uh, as Canadians. And in many cases, um, you know, we may have cultural differences. There may be differences uh, between different cultures, but it's those big values that we all share. You know, the values that uh, relate to, uh, you know, protecting each other, working towards a common goal. Those are the things that drive people to come here uh, to Ontario. And the simple fact is uh, we need immigration here in the province of Ontario. It's vital to our economy. And uh, we have uh, a problem in Ontario. Uh, we have an aging population. Uh, our baby boomers are retiring. And um, there's a, a skill shortage in uh, many different sectors. So we know that over the next uh, 25 years, uh, we're going to see uh, a huge demand in certain sectors. And uh, we're going to have to attract the best and brightest from around the world in order to, uh, to continue to grow our economy here in the province. So here's some interesting facts. Our newcomers who arrive here in Ontario, 75% uh, come with at least one degree. Uh, many come, as you know, with uh, two or three different degrees. Uh, so we have a very high skilled uh, uh, percentage of, uh, of educated newcomers who arrive here in the province of Ontario. And they bring cultural diversity. And um, we know that the, uh, the uh, uh, the connections they have internationally are also very, very valuable in order to help grow our economy. Um, I always say, you know, those, uh, those, those connections that newcomers bring here to our, into the province of Ontario and those, that cultural diversity is really something that allows us in, in Ontario to, uh, to really strive to uh, leverage the diversity uh, that we have. Um, I always say if we're going to make it, if there's going to be a deal that's made internationally, um, and it's going to be made between, uh, you know, uh, uh, J J Jamaica and, uh, and, and Paraguay. Why not ha have it happen here in Toronto? Because we have those, the representation, we have people who know local economies, and, uh, and uh, there's a lot of goodwill that's out there, too, and uh, the brand's strong, the Canadian brand is strong. Let's have those deals made here uh, in the province of Ontario. A recent study by the American Partnership of the New American Economy found that seven of the 10 most popular brands in North America, so this is the Apple, Google, AT&T, IBM, come from companies that were founded by immigrants or the children of immigrants. It's seven of the top 10 brands in North America, which I think is interesting. Um, the same study found that Fortune 500 companies founded by immigrants employ over 10 million people worldwide, which I think is astonishing. If you think about it, those are people who have left their country of origin, gone to other countries, started a business, and internationally, uh, they have the, uh, the, the power to, uh, to employ 10 million people. A recent study by the Bank of Montreal, this came out a few months ago, maybe seven months ago, um, showed that almost half of Ontario's richest residents now are immigrants, which I think is pretty interesting if you think about that. Um, so the success is clear. Today, Ontario has more visible minorities and more members of underrepresented immigrant communities sitting in boardrooms, sitting in, uh, in, in places uh, where they can make uh, uh, leadership decisions, uh, but we know there's more work to be done. Um, I, always, uh, I always talk about you know, leading by example. If you look at our caucus, the Liberal caucus at, at Queen's Park, you know, one third of our caucus, so we have uh, 49 members, one third of our members uh, are uh, born outside of the country, and at least, uh, I would say, one fourth 
I think I did a count this morning, it was that 25% uh, are visible minorities. You know, we have some incredible people in our caucus, uh, people like uh, Reza Moregi, uh, Maria Sergio, uh, people who have come from other countries uh, and really taken on some challenges. Mario is always telling me, uh, Mario Sergio, that he came here when he was 14 years old, didn't know how to speak English, arrived here by himself, didn't know anyone, and walked around the streets of Toronto trying to find a job. You know, these are typical stories of Canadians, of Ontarians, and, uh, you know, uh, there are people in government that share those same stories, which I think is good. But we need to make sure those same experiences, those, those same stories get into our boardrooms, they get into the corporate uh, world, but also into the workforce. So, there's good news that's out there. But the not so good news is that we are underutilizing the skills of our foreign trained professionals here in the province of Ontario. Um, and it's holding us back. It's holding us back at a time when we cannot afford to be held back because it's costing us. Costing us. According to the Conference Board of Canada, they say the underutilization of those skills by foreign trained professionals uh, here in Canada cost our economy about five billion dollars a year in lost productivity. And I think that's pretty, uh, pretty incredible. In addition to that, in 2012, a TD study found that new, if new newcomer skills were rewarded on par with native-born born Canadians, so newcomer skills were rewarded on par with native-born Canadians, there would be an additional $30 billion added to our economy. So we know it takes roughly 10 years for a newcomer to catch up to uh, an Ontario-born uh, person who's in the exact same job. And that's unacceptable. We know that $30 billion in the economy would be good, obviously, for government. We get more taxes, but it would also be good for cus uh, consumer spending, the housing market, and just uh, continue to build that economy here in our province. So we need uh, immigrants from around the world to choose Ontario as a destination. We want to attract the best and brightest from around the world. And uh, there's a lot of competition. Uh, it's not like before, you know, where Ontario was just this great place and people just showed up. It, you have to put in place strategy and you have to put in place the time and effort to attract people. I'll tell you, um, when I was in Hamilton uh, six months ago when I met with the mayor, they were telling me that the mayor of Calgary was in Ontario trying to convince people, business to come to Calgary. So the competition's not between Ireland and Canada, you know, and other countries in Canada. It's even between provinces. And there's big demand uh, to attract newcomers, uh, uh, not only uh, across Canada, but in all parts of Ontario and internationally. But the thing is, it's not good enough to invite people here to Ontario and say, come and join us here and, uh, and say, okay, you're on your own. We know that. We need to do more. Um, and that's why we've invested uh, almost a billion dollars since 2003 uh, to help newcomers settle here in the province of Ontario. And that's why we support groups like the Maytree Foundation when it comes to the diversity in the uh, boardroom and in the workplace that they're trying to uh, uh, push forward. And that's why Ontario now has an immigration strategy and that's why I introduced yesterday the proposed uh, Immigration Act, the first act of its kind here in the, in, the, in the history of this province. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about both, the immigration strategy, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the act. So 16 months ago, our government introduced a new strategy. It's called uh, uh, A New Direction. And it had three objectives. First, to attract the best and brightest. Two, to uh, really give them the support services uh, that they need uh, to uh, settle well and uh, allow them to, uh, to find success, but also to find success for their families. And the third one is to leverage the diversity that is here in Ontario, which is one that I struggle with often, actually, because it's a tough one. It's a tough one. How do you fully maximize the diversity here in the province of Ontario to benefit our province? You know, there's many ways we're doing it, but if we could potentially maximize that diversity here in our province, I think it's a game changer. It's, it's really something that would actually uh, uh, catapult uh, this province in this country into uh, a new, I think, era of economic uh, prosperity. Under the strategy, we've been working with employers to try to figure out why aren't employers hiring uh, newcomers with uh, the exact same skills as their Canadian counterparts, this Canadian experience piece. You know, I've gone right across the province asking the same question, trying to find out, you know, what's the answer and what we can do to, to bring those changes. And uh, we know that uh, there is no question, when you have diversity in the workplace, 
it changes, uh, it changes that workplace. We know that diversity increases productivity, creativity. Uh, it actually increases the amount of, uh, of dollars that come into that organization because people are thinking from a different way. And I think that as more employers realize the value that diversity brings here into the province of Ontario and into their businesses, they'll start to catch on. I was at a company yesterday called Plastic Mobile. Has anyone heard of this company? Plastic Mobile, a couple of people. Plastic Mobile is an incredible company. They're down at Liberty Village. They had two employees five years ago. And I met the owner, she's a young lady, and uh, she started a company to build apps and they built interactive technology using smartphones and, for example, vending machines where you walk up, if it's in a workplace, you just pick what you want and it's built onto your account. You know, very interactive stuff. You can walk into a, you know, a store and if you're programmed as a you know, customer to that store, you walk in uh, automatically. Let's just say it's a coffee shop. Uh, they know that you're in the store, they know what you want, and it's ready for you, and it's built onto your account. Like really cool interactive stuff. This is a company that started five years ago with two employees, now they have 50 employees, and I went into the company yesterday when I made the announcement with the proposed legislation. And I met the employees, and half the employees are from, you know, born in Ontario, the other half are from all around the world. And she said something interesting to me when I asked her, um, you know, what has made you uh, hire so many newcomers? Because it's very different from you know, other companies from across the province. She said, you know, she doesn't discriminate based on where people were born, she discriminates based on skills. And I thought that was a fair answer. Because every single person in that room, uh, the, those 50 employees that worked with her, had a specific skill that, she, that they could bring to the table, and it, made, it gave that company a competitive edge. So I asked her, are the companies out there saying, where did this company come from? And she said, they say that all the time. Five years, this company has just exploded. And it's, uh, it's competing with the big players now. And it's because this owner has had the foresight to capture that diversity, to take in that international global perspective, to attract people into her uh, organization that understand what's happening internationally, and build a plan based on those experiences in order to, uh, in order to penetrate global markets, but also uh, penetrate the Canadian market. So, more employers are getting it. You know, I met the uh, CEO from, uh, from uh, Steam Whistle, same thing. He gets it. Came into my office, talked about that. There are organizations out there that get it, but not enough companies understand the value. So, I met with 150 uh, different organizations from across the province, and I asked them the question, and um, the employers gave us a lot of good ideas, how they can work better with the new proposed expression of interest model that's coming out of Ottawa in January of 2015, which uh, will link uh, immigration to, uh, to, uh, to citizenship. Um, this is what the federal government is proposing. We know businesses are going to have a larger role in uh, connecting to the global talent and bringing them here uh, to the country. So out of those conversations, we decided that we need to recognize and award our uh, companies that are doing well. So we established the Ontario Award for Leadership in Immigrant Employment to recognize employers who champion diversity and support jobs in their communities. And last fall, five outstanding Ontarian recipients from across the province were honored during the ceremony at the Economic Summit uh, in Niagara Falls. And these outstanding winners recognize the benefits of hiring diverse workforce, their hiring practice, innovation and inclusive business culture are paving the way for greater economic growth in this province. And as I mentioned yesterday, we, we introduced uh, the Immigration Act uh, uh, proposed legislation uh, here in the province of Ontario. And this is really the first of its kind. And if it's passed, Ontario would be the only the second province in the, in, or territory in this country uh, to have its own immigration legislation. And it would enable this province to welcome more highly skilled immigrants to help meet our future labor market needs. And the legislative proposal would also strengthen our very successful uh, selection program that we have here in the province of Ontario. So we have the ability through the provincial nominee program to select roughly 1.5% of our newcomers who are coming into the province. Other provinces like Saskatchewan, other provinces like Alberta, Manitoba, there's high as 34% where they have the ability to self-select to meet their labor market needs. We have, uh, have uh, uh, pushed hard on policy uh, through the immigration strategy to tell Ottawa that Ontario needs uh, stronger, to, to play a stronger role in our immigrant selection process because we need to align those skills that exist here in Ontario that are sometimes very different than 
you know, that uh, uh, compared to out west, for example, we need to make sure that at the end of the day we can align uh, newcomers who are coming into our province with the job opportunities that are here, and we're hoping that uh, this legislation will do that and uh, allow us to work within a framework uh, to create uh, different types of categories to be more uh, specific when it comes to the matching between newcomers and, uh, and the jobs that are here. So, we think about Ontario. Uh, you know, internationally, people look at Canada and Ontario as a beacon of hope, trust, freedom, a place of opportunity, strong pillars in place that give people a fair chance in life. But we really need to get uh, our foreign trained professional piece right uh, because we know that only 25% of those people who are trained uh, in that specific field here in Ontario are working in that, in that specific job. And that's not good enough. So we need to continue to look at ways, make investments into our bridge training programs, work with uh, organizations like Skill for Change, uh, Ryerson, uh, the Ryerson uh, University, uh, to continue to uh, champion that change that's necessary. Um, I want to conclude by saying that, you know, the transition between moving from one country to another country has always been a difficult transition. You know, I'm, my parents are, are newcomers, uh, were newcomers to this country, I'm an immigrant to this country. Uh, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of people who are working within our workforce, 30% who, uh, who, who, who are immigrants, uh, were immigrants to Canada. Um, and we need to make sure that um, as we continue to bring people here uh, to our province, that the opportunities are there. And it is an economic imperative. There is no question about it. We also do realize it's, uh, it's about building a, a strong society, which I think has always been the, uh, the most attractive feature of why people come here to the province of Ontario. We look after each other, and we care for each other. And I think if you look at our, uh, our healthcare system, our education system, you know, there's not many places in the world where this happens. And never in the history of the world has a place like Ontario existed.